Hello, this is the sixth and final task in the Advanced Synoptic Second AAT Sample Assessment Paper. So if I just share the screen and then find what we're looking for. Right, so task six. Just make that a bit bigger. Right, so still new place. You are working on the accounts for the year ended December X7. Your next task is to complete the extended trial balance, which was left unfinished by a person who has since left. An extract is shown below, an extract, not the whole thing. Extend the entries for the highlighted items into the appropriate statement of profit or loss statement of financial position columns and they've told us the loss for the year figure because it's only an extract we wouldn't be able to work it out so we're going to have to just plunk that in when we get to that bit right so remember when you're dealing with an extended trial balance statement of profit or loss these are your expenses these are your income these are your assets these are your liabilities right so they've already done the cash and bank for us the other thing to say is kind of imagine you've got a big bold line here and what's ever to the left of it needs to be the same to the right of it so it's not like if it's a credit here it goes to a debit it stays the same so credit cash and bank is a liability in the statement of financial position purchase ledger control also a liability in the statement of financial position. Right, the allowance for doubtful debt. So they've started with 2000, but then they've reduced it. And I know that because it's on the debit side by 182. So 2000 minus 182 is 1818. Now the allowance for doubtful debts is a reduction to the trade receivables. So therefore it must sit in the statement of financial position. Position, didn't say that right. Right, irrecoverable debts expense. So we've started with a debit here and they've pulled that across for us into the expense column of the statement of profit or loss. About two minutes. Um, the inventory, so we've got the um, opening and closing. So the ledger balance will always be the opening inventory because that's what's there from the beginning. And then someone's come along and put the adjustment in for the closing. Right, so going across this row, we know that the opening inventory is going to be an expense in the profit and loss account because the opening inventory um, is sort of part of the purchases, it's part of the expense of the business. We've now sold it, so it formed part of the expense. The closing inventory we know has to sit as an asset in the statement of financial position, and also as a reduction to the cost of sales figure, because we haven't yet sold the closing inventory. Right, they told us the loss for the year figure is 185588. So I've got to be careful what side that goes. So normally, you know, if it was a profit, my credits would be bigger than my debits, and I would have put my profit in to plug the gap. So if it's a loss, it must be going in here. And again, that makes sense because when I come across to the statement of financial position, Normally, I would put it in as a credit, as if it's a profit, because I'd be adding to the capital. But for a loss, I'm reducing my worth of the business, so it goes in there. Okay. Later in the day, you receive an email from Mo. We have received an invoice from Wright & Sons for rent for the storage unit. The invoice is dated 13th of February 20x8 and relates to the quarter ended 31st of January x8. 
Right, so I'm drawing on a piece of paper, quarter ended January, so that's January working backwards, December and November. My year end is December, so I'm drawing a sort of thick line there. Um, I'll show you show you my drawing at the end if you if you want. Um, so the invoice is dated February. So it's I'm writing that sort of right out, over the end, um, forty two thousand pounds. So basically, I'm seeing from that that I've got to add in two thirds of the forty two thousand pounds which is 28,000 pounds needs to be accrued because it's missing. It relates to November and December and it's missing. But as I said, I'll show you my, my little picture here just at the end. So complete the journal. So for an accrual, I need to debit the expense because I'm bringing in extra expense so it is rent for a storage unit. So rent, debit, 28,000 and credit approval, 28,000. Oops, I could be a bit more specific there actually and say accrued expenses. Right, narrative. So every journal should have a narrative. We didn't really practice this before because there was no human marked element. Sometimes we've had the ones with the drop downs. So I'm just going to say um, that this is providing an accrual for rent of the storage unit. So it's just a brief description of what the journal is for. Probably not exactly what they have said, but it should do. Right. Following the inputting of this journal, calculate the revised profit or loss. Right. So remember, we had a loss of 185588. I've just put through even more expenses, 28,000. So I'm just going to work out, so minus 185588 minus 28,000 gives me a figure of, it's a loss, so do a minus sign, so minus 213588. And I think that, yep, yeah, is the end 